Russell. This is how we roll. This is 979, the BOX. Hi! How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I love your lipstick and your nails. I see you are flawless today. I see you. Can you see me trying, girl? And the earrings. Sally, I'm trying to go with our colors. You know, I was trying to make it work. So I, I see I did a little something, a you little something. Good. How are Thank you? Thank you. I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having me on to talk yes. about our campaign. Yes, yes. I can't wait to talk about it. So talk, tell everybody, like, introduce yourself and tell them about sure. yourself and get into the campaign. For sure. Hey, guys. Thank you for joining today. I'm Bree Lewis. I'm here representing Own Every Piece, which is a campaign here in Houston, um, a, a campaign for better birth control. We advocate for women to have um, high quality contraceptive care, high quality reproductive health care. Um, and we do that on the clinic side and on the community side. So um, On Every Piece is definitely a campaign that recognizes the barriers that a lot of women face, especially women of color, mm -hmm. when it comes to just seeking reproductive health care. And, and we are trying to address those barriers um, with a, a multi-pronged fork. <laughs> I love it. So how long has, the, um, has On Every Piece been around? So we're actually a fairly new campaign. We launched in um, December of 2018. Oh my God. Okay. This is 2020. So it <laughs> wasn't 2019. Like, what, I we? know it's been a lot. So yeah, we launched in December of 2018. Okay. Um, and we did, it was like a soft launch. We piloted some things and then we did our full rollout that following June or July. Um, and ever since then, we've been hitting the ground hard. You, a lot of people may have seen us like at uh, community events. We're mm -hmm. at TSU a lot. Oh, we've been cool. at HCC. Mm -hmm. uh, we really try to get out there and make our voice known and make sure that people know, women especially know about us, men as well. Um, we have a list of influencers that we've worked with um, over the, the past couple of years. And that's been great as far as getting our name out. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we, we've been around since December 2018, June 2019. Awesome. So, okay, during this time, you know, it's social distancing and stuff. What have y'all been doing to, like, you know, stay connected and keep the campaign going, even though we all online? That's such a great question, Jazz, because COVID-19, look, Miss Rona girl. Miss Rona girl, no. Has caused us so, so many, many problems, and, and it's increased the barriers that women are facing um, even more so than they were already facing, especially when you think about low income, um, women of color, minorities. Um, so one of the things that we've really been doing is trying to make sure that we amplify the voices of women through our campaign and their experiences and, and, and making sure that they still have equal access to care. When you think about like essential services, mm -hmm. um, reproductive health care wasn't a part of that. I don't understand why, you know, because that's, it's, it's something that that's essential. Exactly. So <laughs> um, we've been working with our clinics to enhance their telemedicine services. All of our clinic partners are currently uh, allowing women to book appointments for telemedicine um, and still be able to get the services that they need, whether it's birth control, whether it's uh, a well women exam, um, we're, we're making sure that our clinics have the resources they need. And then when you think about it on the community side, ensuring that women just know what it is that they can expect with a telemedicine appointment and um, what they can expect what are at, some of at the our clinic. What can expect with a telemed? Because it's really easy. I've done it before. Well, it's funny because I haven't, but I've heard about people's experience. Mm -hmm. and we're still learning more especially me um some of the things I think that even our clinic partners said that they want women to know is that if your appointment's at like 2 30 the call probably won't come through right at 2 30 that's, part. that's yeah. the thing the waiting room is real I'll just say that <laughs> it's yes. like it's basically like still going to a clinic and waiting in the waiting room but you're just at home, like mm -hmm. in the kitchen, laptop open, you know, waiting around for the, the physician to call you. But mm -hmm. um, th that's one of the things that even our clinics have said they really, really want women to know is just how it works yeah. and, and what to expect. And so that just, I think that that, and knowing that when you book your appointment, they need a number that they know you'll still have 
um, or be able to access during the time of the appointment to to be expected to like answer the call and things like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So, what are some of the like frequently asked questions that you get about the organization and the initiative and stuff? That's a a great question because I think they they've shifted a little with um, mm -hmm. COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think a lot of people really just want to know what we stand for. And um, when we say a campaign for better birth control, people assume that it's like, oh, so you want women to have birth control so they won't have babies or whatever their their needs are, what, you know, health needs even for birth control. When really we want women to have the, the right choice. to choose. It's their choice because it's we, their choice. Hello. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We want them to have the right to choose. We want them to feel like if they want, high quality contraception they can get that in this large city that should be able to provide that at a, a high quality rate um and we want women to feel like if they want to parent they can get safe services and healthy you know they can do that in a healthy way right with yes. a, a physician a trusted physician that even looks like them along their side that that is black that is um latina you know whatever the case may be we want women to feel like whatever they choose is not the physician's choice it's not mom's choice aunt's choice that all of those are influenced for sure they influence our decision making but we want women to feel like they have the power to decide what they want for themselves and within that power they have the resources to be able to get that right exactly so what are some things that you feel like um like you wish that you were told as a young woman that you know now Ooh, girl. <laughs> okay, just give us a little piece of one of the one of one one thing you wish you knew back then. As it relates to like, we I guess can having information, just having getting information, information, about okay, and everything, yeah. I think for me, I don't, I don't think that like growing misconceptions up, maybe and stuff. Yeah, I don't think I knew a lot about it. Um, birth control, even sex, sexual health, reproductive health. I didn't know a lot because the information just wasn't available um and it's not like it's information that people want to give to an adolescent you so for me it was like going to college and you know now I'm, I'm starting to film myself a little bit so let me go <laughs> to the student health center and figure out like what's, what's really going on yeah. you know <laughs> you know because I was you know we was in college like right so that's I, when it started popping right right I just wish there was more information and that's why I love on every piece because we provide facts right like it's mm -hmm. It is what it is. We're going to let you know about symptoms you may experience with certain birth control methods um, or may not experience. And we'll, we'll make sure that you know what's, what's up with our clinic partners and, and what we know they lack in and, and where you can go to get one service versus another. And so I just wish I had more information. Like, I don't feel like I got a lot to college. And that it was so destructive in itself or, or harmful more yeah. so because – I mean, you know, I had boyfriends in high school. Like, it would have been nice to know about certain things in high Instead school. Instead of it being unspoken like a taboo, it can be just something that is talked about for safety reasons and stuff like that, you know? Exactly, exactly. And that's that's also another, when you think about, like, barrier, um, is people feeling like if you use birth control, you're promiscuous. Or right. if you use birth control, you're having sex when it's like, Actually, you know, most of my friends start using birth control because they want to control their acne. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of people don't even know the options that they have for themselves. So you have people who, instead of getting on like this pill or a next planon, which is what I have and I love it. What is um, it? The next planon, the one that goes in your arm. Oh, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. I've heard about it. I've heard about it. Yeah. So instead of doing that, they'll go and buy like, 10 plan b's in two weeks which is oh, is oh, an, a, a form of like emergency contraception but like yeah you know but they don't they don't in their their in fairness to them they don't know those things you know right. um so at the end of the day it's all about getting people information there's i think in my opinion in the city of houston mm -hmm. a lack of reproductive health care and and contraception information Mm -hmm. And oh, so, where is yeah. Own Every Piece? Are y'all located? Are y'all are at the uh, UT uh, Health School of Public Health, right? Yeah, we're at UT um, UT Health School of Public Health, oh, and uh, Dr. Baker, Dr. Kimberly Baker, is our 
um, principal investigator, our project lead. This is her project. I've been working with her. She's amazing. If anybody, if there's anyone on here that like can go and look and, and is interested in reproductive justice, social justice, yeah. um, discrimination, race bias, anything relating to reproductive health, maternal health, that's her expertise, her area of expertise. And she's heavily involved in the community with those topics. And um, she does great work. And I've been working with Kim for for four to five years. Oh, okay. And um, and it's, it's so nice to see what On Every Piece has grown into because this has always been a vision to get women more information, to, get, to build clinic capacity, to make sure that women have um, respect and bodily autonomy when they go to these clinics, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they don't feel like, especially black women, they don't feel like they're not being heard when they're speaking to providers. Or, mm -hmm. um, we also train our clinics to uh, focus on their implicit biases so that they don't bring those to appointments. Because you see oftentimes that providers um, believe that African-American women should have a certain type of method compared to white women. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's really interesting. <laughs> it is like, when we I really get into that. the okay. details yeah. of stuff, it, and, it, and it all goes back to um, the history of, of reproductive health with our communities and reproductive, the reproductive justice side of it that we're trying to tackle now. Um, and that's why for us, it is so important to acknowledge the history mm -hmm. to make sure that we can educate properly moving forward. And, and, uh, and we understand the experiences that we, you know, have, yeah. have experienced ourselves. And so just trying to make sure that women also know that we're acknowledging those and, and, and we're working towards making it better for all women of color. Definitely. And I love that so much. I love everything on every piece stands for. So where yes. can people get uh, more information if they want to reach out? Like what's the best way they can contact you? So you can contact us here. Yeah, comment your Instagram down there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't that is so I lost smart. it. Uh, okay. Comment, and then I can see type it. I feel like I look crazy, but I can't see myself anymore. Okay. <laughs> um, every, oh my God. So y'all can get the Instagram, share it with anyone, maybe your family, friend, whoever. Yes, and you can um go to our website. I, I should have put that too. Okay, you, you know what? Don't pin that. Don't pin that. Okay. Don't pin that. Don't pin that. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> but okay. Every piece is the Instagram, y'all, so you can get more information there. I know it's easy for y'all to pull up on the IG profile. Okay, there you go. Yes. <laughs> and I went to the website too. They have a lot of information on there. I saw on the website they have answers to a lot of misconceptions and stuff yeah. people have about birth control. It's very dope, very informative. I love that. So thank you yes. so much though for sharing. Anything You're else welcome. you want to add before you go to? Um, the only thing I want to add is that anything like, on if your mind. You, like if you want more information, feel free to go to our website on everypiece.com. Um, you can reach out to us at on everypiece at gmail.com. You can reach out to us, DM on Instagram, Facebook. If you have any questions, we will make sure that we get those answered to you um, for you by a, a trusted medical expert. So please, please, please um, look into the uh, look into our initiative. We we really believe in again amplifying the voices of women, especially now more than ever. You know, with everything that's going on. Um, Black women, for sure, we need someone to, like, be a, a a push for us and, like, to continue to push for us. And we're doing that on the reproductive health care side. And so... Um, it is so important, though. People like... Oh that, God, like yes. Your body is... It's your body. Like, I, it, it blows my mind sometimes. Yeah. But I'm very passionate about it as well, too. So hopefully, are y'all going to have any upcoming events, do you know, of, like, virtually or uh i don't know about in person like hey, later, yeah, uh, later in the year i don't know knows, things are opening up fast in texas <laughs> like i don't know everything is wide open at this point <laughs> but um so we have we've hosted events virtually we did a virtual happy hour that was really fun oh, cool. we actually you know what girl i'm so glad you said that because we have this uh card game that I have here. It's an own every piece Ooh. card game. It has four categories: um, wild card, fact or fiction, then and now, and in bed. Oh. And yes, yes, it is fun. It's really fun to play. I'm gonna ask you a question before we get out. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Wait, who made up this game? Who made those? So cards? our team. Uh, we will send it to you if you just email us. We'll let you know. Like we yeah. really want personal storytelling or people to share their experiences with us. Um, as far as the reproductive healthcare climate 
climate in Houston and their experience and we'll send you we'll send you a pack and um it's perfect it's a perfect girls night game so let me see (laughs) Uh let me see I'm gonna do I'm scared uh uh-uh, because kidding. don't do that because i no because i went to the website and every one of those misconceptions i had got it wrong i was like oh lordy i'm not ready for this interview uh, okay okay i'm a, i think i'm gonna keep it mm, okay let's see i'm gonna keep it i'm gonna keep it cute, <laughs> keep it cute. so after six cuddle or no cuddle cuddle for sure <laughs> Cuddle, cuddle for sure. sure. It's a me for sure too. for me. I mean, me yeah, I don't sleep with strangers. Because if right, I was a like, stranger, I wouldn't cuddle with them, but that ain't my vibe, so. Right. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> time for that. me to go now. Yes. This is awkward. Like, okay. In that case, then it would have been a yes. But if you gave me a PG question, thank you so much. No, <laughs> no, wait, one more, one more. Uh-oh. Okay, this, one more so, book in the, so that was a wild card. These are going to be, like, fact or fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have then and now. So... In what year did it become legal for unmarried people to have access to birth control? Was it A, 1922, B, 1956, and C, 1972? 56. 72. Mm-hmm. I, I knew we weren't that, that long ago. Look at that. Yes. Yes. That's what I be. It blows my mind. I tried to give us the benefit of the doubt. Like, no, nah, I couldn't have been in the 70s. That was no. Just... Nope. See, it wasn't that, is... that long ago. Exactly, and that's why it's so important for us to learn this stuff too. And yeah. it's just crazy. Somebody yeah. in the comments had the answer right. Okay, I see y'all. I see y'all. I see y'all. Uh, my bad. That's, not, that's my bad. Y'all supposed to help me. I'm supposed to phone a friend. <laughs> cool. Well, let y'all know what to do if y'all want a deck of cards. Reach out to us, and we got you. We can send a DM just to own every yep. own every piece and go to the website. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Thank y'all. Thank you so much, Brianna, for logging Thank on. Thank you. Thank y'all, everybody in the comments for being a part of the conversation. We appreciate y'all, and I'm gonna put it on the Instagram feed so y'all can watch the whole thing back. All right. Thanks, Jazz. Bye. Bye.